Hello everyone and welcome to the district update for Friday, March 12, 2021. I'm Anita Foster. We're filming today from the Center for Visual and Performing Arts in front of the brand new Steinway Piano, recently donated by friend of the district, Mr. Dan Dipert. We've got some big topics to talk about today, including the new mask orders in Texas and Tarrant County, the latest decision from TEA on Hold Harmless, We've got graduation plans for the class of 2021. And from the mailbag, we've got some questions about the teaching model as we move forward. We're gonna talk about the high school hybrid model, and then we're gonna to end today with a look at vaccination day 2021. Joining us as always is our superintendent, Dr. Marcelo Cavazos. You have all the answers to all of our questions. <laughs> so Dr. Cavazos, how are you? I'm doing well, Anita. It's good to see you. And, and I look forward to addressing these topics. They seem very, very interesting. Well, we've got some good ones today. Let's start with the mask mandate. On March the 2nd, we heard the governor announce that masks would no longer be required as of March the 10th. And then the county said not required in Tarrant County effective on that day. So what did the school district decide to do with the mask mandates? That's right, Anita. So we know that our Tarrant County judge lifted the mask order. Our governor lifted the mask order. We reviewed that. And we also know that in our school system, the mask, keeping your distance, washing your hands, those protocols, they work. They continue to work. Health screeners, temperature checks, those protocols will continue. And we know that uh, we have placed safety as our number one priority in this district, and we're gonna continue to do that. So for us, the protocols will continue. Do you see that being the case through the remainder of this school year? I do see that being uh, the case for the remainder of the school year. As with anything, Anita, with, during this time, we continue to evaluate. We'll talk more as we move into different topics, but we continue to evaluate that, look at the numbers, et cetera. But we know these protocols have helped us mitigate the spread, and quite frankly, it helps us continue and sustain the opening of our schools. We want our schools to continue to be open, uh, and this helps. I think that's so important. You know, it has been a year of disruption, but I think science has shown us that the mask wearing does help to reduce the spread of COVID in our schools. So just to clarify, masks will be required uh, along with all of the other That's safety correct. protocols. Nothing really changes for Arlington ISD. Very good. Now there is something that has changed, but in a good way. Talk to us about hold harmless. Remind us what that means and the recent decision from TEA. That's right. So for several editions, we've been talking about the hold harmless. We know that during this pandemic over across the country, enrollment has dipped. And so projected enrollment for school districts, not just Arlington, but across the country, have continued to go down and enrollment projections were not met. We know when enrollment projections drop and they're not met, uh, we lose funding. And that's a, that's a very uh, a challenging impact on, on school districts. So we've been advocating to hold us harmless for the rest of this school year, which means that keep our funding stable. Fund us pre-pandemic funding levels not pandemic funding levels, if you will. And so the state recently announced that they would hold us harmless, keep our funding stable. Uh, and that's a good thing for this school year. And so we're appreciative of the state and our state representatives and senators and Texas Education Agency because that's a big move to make sure that we sustain our funding and can continue the things that we're doing this school year. It's a, a very good news story, especially as we move towards the end of this year. We don't quite know what next year will look like, uh, but if I hear you correctly, that keeps us whole that's for this year. And that's, that is great news. That's correct. And I want to commend Anita because the reason we uh, can continue many of the things we're doing is because our staff at the earliest part of this school year found students, reached out to students, made sure that we uh, enrolled as many students as we could uh, that were uh, able to be found and things like that. We're about 4% below our projected enrollment. Uh, and across the Metroplex, there's districts with 7%, 8% below the projected enrollment. So uh, while we're still below projected enrollment, uh, our staff has done a great job to reach out to students. Well, that is extremely good to hear. And then we have another piece of good news. It's a trend today, Dr. Cavazos. That's right. Uh, graduation 2020 was a challenge to say the least. We were at the beginning of COVID. We couldn't gather indoors at all. Um, we didn't have a graduation location. Uh, we did some scrambling, got AT&T Stadium lined up. But here we are, who knew, a year later, 2021, 
same challenge. What are we going to do this year? Yeah, so that's a question that emerges uh, continually, and that is, where are we going to graduate this school year, the class of 21? Well, I can tell you today that we're going to graduate at AT&T Stadium like we did last year. It's an exceptional venue. We have a great partnership with the Dallas Cowboys, and I thank them for uh, being a great partner and uh, providing this venue for our students to graduate this school year. So we'll be announcing the dates. There'll be some adjustments to those dates but it'll be at at and Stadium. And we'll put those on, uh, we'll set up a special website, we'll message parents so everybody is aware of the graduation schedule. You know, I think it's great uh, because I know last year it was sort of unexpected. We were on uh, monitoring social media and issuing hashtags for all the different schools and things like that and just following along with the excitement. And it was just amazing how many people love seeing their graduate up on that 60 <laughs> foot right. screen. That's it's right. like everybody looks better at 60 feet. Right. It's, a, it's a special place and it's a special time of the year. And we know our students have faced many challenges, our senior class this year. Uh, and, and so to them, uh, this is an, an important uh, time and also an important venue for us to, uh, to have graduation. So I thank AT&T Stadium staff and uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Very good, very exciting news. All right, so let's go to our mailbag. And this is where employees send us a question that they want you to answer. We've got three questions, but two of them are along the same lines. So I'll give you those and then you can answer that and then we'll go to our third question. What will the school year 21-22 look like for teachers and students? And then another teacher asked, is the district working on a way to designate virtual only and in-person only teachers for the next year? So the, the short answer to that is yes. I anticipate the 21-22 school year will be much more normal, if you will, if we offer virtual instruction. And I say if because the state legislature is going to have a lot to say about that. Uh, and so is TEA about what districts are allowed to do in terms of virtual instruction. But if we offer virtual instruction in the fall, we will designate virtual instruction teachers and in-person teachers. We will not have the concurrent instructional delivery model like we have today. And the reason for that is because we believe that we will have less of a volume of students for virtual instruction. In fact, Anita, we're going to start that process this summer. So with our summer school, with the uh, number of students coming, the offerings in summer school, we'll have virtual teachers teaching the virtual students and in-person teachers teaching in person. And I wanna just, just for context, because I, I, I share this often when I get this question. The reason we have concurrent instruction right now, teaching both the virtual and the in-person, is because of our numbers. We have about 50-50. Half of the students wanna stay home, half of the students wanna to come to school. And we know that this concurrent model is the best for our students when we have that kind of split. Other parts of the state, they have 80 or 90% of the students coming to school. And so you can begin to disconnect those two uh, instructional delivery models uh, much more uh, effectively. So this is the model that's best for students that we have today, the context we have today. But we know in the summer and the fall, we're going to discontinue that and designate virtual teachers and in-person teachers. Well, thank you. I know many teachers ask about that, so I'm sure they'll very much appreciate hearing that from you. Okay, so the last question we have from the mailbag was from another teacher who asked about the safe opening of schools as we grow enrollment. So she says, safe opening at the elementary level has been possible using all the protocols in place because the number of students were low and manageable. Now that face-to-face -face numbers are increasing, how can teachers and schools maintain the protocols? Yeah, it's a great question, Anita. So we know that those big pieces to the puzzle to return to normalcy are coming together. We're not quite there, but they're coming together. More vaccine available uh, for everyone. Um, the fact that our numbers are low, continuing to trend down. Now spring break may have a different effect on that, but we'll continue to monitor that, but the numbers are dropping. And so we know that uh, our protocols, vaccination more uh, readily available, the numbers, the percentage of, of uh, positivity rate dropping, that those things contribute to a safe environment. And so we want to continue to follow our protocols. Um, and we also know that buildings have made adjustments of where students are located, where students will have their instruction and things like that. So they continue to make those adjustments, but these things are all converging at the same time for better days ahead and closer to normalcy, uh, moving, moving at a better pace. Another area that 
that I know a lot of parents and students want to move closer to normalcy is in the high schools where they're still in the hybrid model. That's correct. Is there any uh, thought around changing that hybrid model? Yeah, so good question, Anita. So we know the hybrid model is necessary and was necessary when numbers were at a, at a peak, if you will, because it mitigated the spread in our high schools and ultimately in our community as well. But we know those things I just mentioned, vaccine be being more readily available, the fact that we are strict in our protocols uh, for uh, in-person in instruction. We know that those things are working. Uh, and so we are evaluating uh, the hybrid model and really looking to see if we can make a change to that hybrid model even this school year uh, to get back to that normalcy faster than not. And so we're looking at that. I will tell you, Anita, one thing I worry about is spring break because every time we have a break or have had a break, uh, when we return, those numbers begin to go up. Now, again, those pieces of the puzzle I just mentioned hopefully will help that not happen. But we're going to evaluate our numbers after spring break so that we are mindful of what's happening with positivity and spread uh, and try to make those decisions informed by those numbers uh, so to see if we can uh, end the hybrid prior to the school year. Uh, still a work in progress, uh, no, no big announcement today, but we are working diligently on that front. Okay, that's good to hear. You've delivered a lot of good news today yeah. on hybrid and the change in the instructional model, uh, the hold harmless being approved. Uh, but I have to tell you, Monday of this week was one of the best news days I've been involved in in a long time. Vaccination day, 2021. Tell us all about it. Well, Anita, I mean, it was a partnership with the Arlington Fire Department. Sincerely thank Chief Krausen. We have been talking about how do we provide vaccination for our staff in Arlington ISD for a while now. And we targeted March the 8th because that was one of our uh, asynchronous days or professional development days and everybody would be available. And Chief Krausen said, if that's the date, then we'll make it happen. And I am just so appreciative. So to your point, Anita, we were able to provide those vaccinations to any of our employees, teachers, custodians, bus drivers, security, you name it. Uh, had the opportunity to go get a vaccine. And uh, I visited the site that day and the joy in our staff members, the, the sense of appreciation um, was just the, the overwhelming actually because they were so happy. And our Arlington Fire Department, our own Arlington um, community comes together to provide vaccination for all our employees. And it was a special day. So as I mentioned before, Anita, we know that's a big piece of the puzzle the vaccination for our educators and the people that work in our school district, our fidelity to the protocols, the numbers continuing to go down in terms of spread and positivity rate. If those things continue, we have a very good chance to accelerate our return to normalcy, which is what we all seek. Um, again, that day was special uh, because so many of our staff members took advantage of that. And I just want to thank security. I won't get them all, but security, our transportation, the logistics, the communications team, our research and accountability for developing a survey where staff can answer that and make sure they're uh, counted in the, in the, in the count. Uh, just everyone who pulled together very quickly, which is what we do in, in our school system, uh, who pulled together very quickly to make this a reality. And I'm just so appreciative. We're blessed to be in Arlington. And thank you again to uh, Chief Krausen from the Arlington Fire Department. Well, I concur. It was good to be a part of something really positive, a good news story uh, for all of our employees. Here we are, Dr. Cavazos, we're at spring break and what a difference a year makes. That's right, Anita, we were about this time last year thinking we will extend spring break by a couple of days. Okay, we'll extend it a week, we'll extend it two weeks and here we are and what we've lived through together. But I've got to tell you, we've got such exceptional people in our school district from the nurses, custodians, security, food services, principals, teachers, students, and the list goes on and on. The persistence and their dedication to making it through this period of time, which quite frankly is the most challenging time we face as our school district. But we pull together. We pull together because our purpose is to serve students and serve them exceptionally well. And that hasn't changed. It's been a difficult time. Here we are on the one year anniversary. And so I wish everyone a happy spring break. That's 
very much deserved. It's like a carrying 10 years worth of challenges in one year. And then just for the record, I'll point out, we also had a tornado and an epic winter storm That's right. amongst all of the challenges. Right. Uh, so here we are. Happy spring break to you, Dr. Cavazos, and to everyone uh, in the district. Absolutely. Enjoy your spring break. Stay safe and stay well. So to all of you. So stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you when we get back. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.